Higher View to interviews is much like Coca-Cola to drinks or Nike to trainers. It has become synonymous with the asynchronous video interview process, the dreaded one-way video interview. It's hard to believe that by 2015, which doesn't seem that long ago, Higher View had already facilitated three million interviews. By now, who knows? Hireview's proprietary algorithm is said to use over 20,000 data points to analyze somebody's interview process and then score it for the companies that use their software. Here are the five biggest Hireview interview mistakes and what you can do about them. Mistake number one, unfamiliarity with the platform. This is so relevant if you have not done a higher view interview before. The amount of times that people have called me after the event and said, Mike, I had a technical glitch, it didn't work. My internet wasn't working. There was something wrong with my microphone. My camera didn't work. Basic technical glitches that could have been sorted ahead of time. If you've never done a higher view video interview before, this is going to sound so simple. Just read the instructions. Do the tutorial. Make sure that everything on your computer is working. Do a dry run beforehand so that on the day you're ready and there are no glitches for you to overcome. Mistake number two, poor environment choice. Now, you may not have the luxury of a professional studio, but you have to make sure that you choose the right environment for your video interview. What does that mean? It means having a nice background and not a messy bed. It means having a quiet place to talk and not somebody knocking on the door every two minutes. It means having a good internet connection. So maybe if you share a house with four of your friends, then try not to film this in the evening. I always recommend that people do their interviews first thing in the morning. There's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, you're fresh. Number two, it's quiet. And number three, the environment is light, is bright, and you'll probably have a great internet connection. Mistake number three, not aligning your answers and your preparation with the job description. Now you've got a high view interview coming up, which means that you're applying to a pretty big company. I don't know what high view charge, but I'm sure it's not a couple of hundred dollars a month. So these are multinational companies which are gonna have clear and easy to understand job descriptions. Always make sure that you do your homework. Print off the job description. Understand what it is that you're going to be doing because your answers to these questions are going to be so important and are going to revolve around the job description. Think about the higher view algorithm. Now, we may not understand the 20,000 data points that they use. I can guarantee that most of them are related to the job description, the keywords, the key skills that are contained within that. So when you're preparing, think about what are the skills that I'm going to need? What are the questions that I'm going to be asked to demonstrate those skills? And what is the experience that I can show to demonstrate that I have these skills? If you tailor your skills and experiences to the job that is required, then you will deliver a phenomenal answer to the questions that will come up in your high view interview. Mistake number four, overlooking the importance of practice. Now I'm going to be really honest with you here. You're probably watching this video after watching lots and lots of other videos about how to not make mistakes doing a higher view video. And you know what the truth is? Watching more of these videos about how not to make a mistake at a higher view video interview isn't really going to make that much difference. Do you know what is going to make a difference? Practice. One of the things that I tend to go through when I do one-to-one -one consults with clients is I ask people, how many times have you just spoken in front of a camera and watched yourself back? How many times have you spoken your answers out loud in front of a mirror? I.e., how many times have you practiced the thing which you're actually going to do? And they'll say, 
not that much, not at all. I've never done it. This is a little bit silly, right? When you think about it, most people will spend most of their time writing their scripts or researching online about what they're going to get asked or watching YouTube videos like these. Well, what's really going to make the difference is the amount of repetition that is realistic that you do. And I'm talking about realistic practice here. I'm not talking about mumbling under your breath as you're reading through your interview script. I'm talking about sitting in front of a camera, speaking your answers out loud and watching yourself back so that you can genuinely improve and give yourself some feedback. Mistake number five, boring body language. Now, what do I mean when I talk about body language? Does that mean that you smile all the time and you act like you're so excited? Maybe not for you. It depends who you are. Should you use your hands? Should you not use your hands? Should you smile all the time or look like you're really excited like a puppy? Not necessarily. But what I would say to you is that looking bored, looking disinterested, speaking in a monotone voice is probably not going to be a good look. So here's some basic elements of body language that you can improve. And some of these are not so obvious. Firstly, speak slowly and clearly. There's no need to rush. If you find when you talk, you gasp, you gulp, you get dry mouth, or you easily forget your words, it's probably because you're speaking too quickly. And the second point really leads on from this. Leave pauses in between your sentences. Pauses are verbal punctuation. It allows us to process information as it's been delivered to us. The third thing would be, yes, a smile will really make a difference. The more relaxed you are, the more you're going to smile or just to feel a little bit more at ease. And do you want to know why people don't smile? It's generally because they feel ill at ease at the camera. They feel anxious, they feel tight or stressed. So this is why practice is so important. The next thing is just to be mindful about any tapping, whether that be your feet, your hands, touching your face, your hair, trying to avoid getting in your own way and trying to keep that nervous energy down to a minimum. And the fifth and final thing that I want you to think about is just how relaxed you are all the way through your body. First of all, just to make sure that you're sitting up straight. Are your shoulders up or are they down? Do you feel relaxed? Do you feel at ease when you're delivering your answer? All of these things are really going to come across when you're delivering what you have to say in your high view video interview, because the less relaxed you are, the more bored that you seem. And if you do not smile at all, then what you say may be great, but how you say it is probably what's going to hold you back. Here's a bonus mistake. Number six, not dressing the part. Now this sounds so silly to say, but you would be surprised how many people I see in interview practice or going to interviews who do not dress the part. Whether that be guys who aren't wearing a suit and tie or women who aren't in business dress. Now here's a few things to talk about with this, which is make sure that what you're wearing is comfortable. Look as smart as you possibly can. What I always tend to say for ladies is, particularly for a video interview with your makeup, make sure it's not reflective. The same with jewelry. If you have it, it should be discreet. Now you've all heard of the saying dress to impress. And I think that's so important for a video interview. And you've really got no excuse considering that probably where you get dressed is right next to where you're going to do your interview. So just to recap, those five mistakes were unfamiliarity with the platform, poor environment choice, not aligning with the job description, a lack of practice and boring body language. And the bonus was just being poorly dressed and presented. Let us know what you thought about this video in the comments down below. Have you got a high view video interview coming up? What's your biggest fear? Have you just done a high view video interview? Is there something useful that you could share with the community and with the JRE crew to help them with their interview? Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you've liked it, make sure to hit that like button drop a comment down below and subscribe to the channel because of course we make more of the content which you like and comment on. Good luck.